Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with bassist Ben Ferris and pianist Jason Coots of the jazz group, Mr. Chair. Based in Madison, Wisconsin, and the winner of the 2021 Wisconsin Area Music Industry Award for Best Jazz Artist, Mr. Chair brings a truly unique performance to every stage they play on. Music of their new 2023 album called Better Days is expansive and varied, toying with fusion, prog rock, jazz, and classical elements, but it's never settling for a singular musical style. We cover their beginnings back in 2015-16, how they got their name, surviving COVID, the future ahead, and so much more. Dig in. Fellows, it's great to meet you on behalf of Mr. Chair. If you don't mind, real quick, just introduce yourself, your instrument, your name for context for the interview. Cool. I'm Ben Ferris. Uh, I'm the bass player with Mr. Chair. And I'm Jason Kutz. I play piano and synthesizers. I'm not going to be that guy and ask you first and foremost about the band name. We'll get there. It'll be a surprise. So what I want to do is I want to dive in first. The The world of COVID really ravaged through the jazz community in a very specific way. So I'm curious how you survived that three-year period and what it feels like now to have music out. The world's waking up. Live shows are happening just kind of in that context as we get into it. I mean, so a lot of a lot of the music for this current record for Better Days was written uh, during during that time, and that was uh, a big part of what we did in our isolation was was write music and work on music. And through some technology stuff, we were actually able to do some collaborating together. Uh, so on our um, website, you can see a video we did, like one of those where we're all in our separate homes way back uh, of a recording of a piece that Jason wrote called Ground Underground for a science collaboration that we do. So uh, certainly some some challenges, but then also a little bit of, uh, you know, just different opportunities or different contexts come out of that. And I know uh, for at least one of the pieces uh, for Abandoned Cities, some of the impact of the pandemic was... Uh, express artistically as well in the in the music yeah it's interesting i mean we we're uh we're a very resilient group we've been uh we've been playing since 2016 and uh but we've we've always found a way to kind of work through our uh our troubles and uh even kind of the troubles at large in the um in the world and yeah, when the pandemic hit, I mean, we, we shut down like everybody else. And about four months into it, we kind of reconnected and started talking about, all right, well, what, what are we going to do? So then we recorded this, this little, uh, video and we're all pretty into audio and definitely into hi-fi recording. And so the recording ended up, we, we feel proud of it. It has that kind of funky, like little square box near in the corner on Zoom look. But we, uh, we did our best to make it sound great and we're proud of it. But then all of a sudden, we're working on these tunes for this, uh, that we ended up recording for this album. We started recording our, our project for, um, that we've been doing for Pulcinella, which is yet to come out. And then we also started working with another artist, uh, De Quadre, that we've been working on a project for three years that really started the collaboration right on the onset of the pandemic. And that thing is rearing to go. And it's um, really a massive project that we're incredibly excited about. So we, we almost really buckled down and got kind of started picking at our backlog of things. And um, and then, yeah, once things opened up, we started touring and playing again a little bit. And uh, now we're back to hitting the books and recording. I, the one more like thing to add, of course, uh, the improvising and the jazz aspect of what we do is really have to do synthetically through the computer. And we had a couple that we did to do that. But like actually getting back together and creating things together in the same space was like a party. It was like, all right, we're back at, it, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And that's the thing that I noticed from my end of things when the pandemic happened, 
I was interviewing more than I ever did before. And it was just like, nothing was happening. Everybody was kind of figuring out what they were going to do. It did slow everybody down to a point where they could get involved with backlog projects that you couldn't do because you were so busy or touring all the time. So now that we're here, the world's opening up. It's so good to see the fruits of the labor because all of that harvest is coming to fruition now, so to speak. So I, I guess that's my other question. You know, you did mention live music. What are you noticing from your perspective now being in a different mode of performing live and even the audience? What does it feel like now prior versus what it felt like prior to the pandemic? I think there's, there's like a preciousness of that together. Right. So like the first summer after things were like, okay, we can get together a little bit. It was kind of this like explosion of like, oh, we're going to party. And it's, it's great. But what I've noticed, especially with like audiences, is that folks are really, at least in our scene in Madison, are really making like an effort to be present at music. They're uh, a little bit less uh, leery of of cover charges and things like that and maybe more more appreciative of like hey i'm gonna go to a music show and we have an amazing scene here in madison wisconsin it seems like okay it's a small town but a uh, very creative music scene and the i've seen noticed that the support for music here in our town really, really expanded after the pandemic is what I've been doing. I think a lot of venues have really, really kind of entered the 21st century mm. finally in terms of like uh, their sound, their setup, their ability to, ability to record. You know, I was just watching that um, uh, there was a, a international live, uh, international jazz day live stream. I've been telling these guys how much I love that they aired on YouTube, the Herbie Hancock kind of produced it and it was videos from all these like live streams that we've gotten used to but but just new recordings of people in a little venue with a piano and everything sounded awesome and it was like wow you could put that together in a week now and people were not able to do that and i think there's something really nice about having um being more comfortable with our technology and being able to use it in ways and, and having the venue be able to use it in ways that helps get the music out there. I'm not all about live streams, um, especially for live concert, but to have a nice recording that you can reference and maybe use a clip of afterwards, that's a, that's a nice upgrade. And that, that didn't exist before the pandemic, really. Well, yeah, and it gave everybody extra skills, which is a good thing. I mean, you know... Yeah. Jazz musicians tend to be rather innovative to begin with. So you add the, you know, you kind of throw a pandemic in and you get the production skills up. I'm still blown away by how prolific and how stratospheric Emma Cohen got. Like, you know, he was known before and he's he's a badass. But my God, like now he's like right up there. Like it just blows me away. I interviewed him. Mm -hmm. I think during the pandemic and he was just trying to navigate his way through. It's like anything. I remember after Bowie died interviewing Donnie McCaslin and he was like, he may have even been in Wisconsin. He was in a hotel room and he's just like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, you know, he's just some guy from New York that Bowie plucked out of the air. And it's kind of like with them, but I, I don't want to derail, but I think that's the thing about this. I've noticed in Kansas city, one of our preeminent places is called the green lady lounge. And it's like a, vampire lair you walk in it's all this red velvet and swanky cool stuff and they used to weave in in your bill enough money to cover the band but now there's a cover and i don't hear anybody talking about it like things have changed to a point where people are doing things in a way which is really good because during the pandemic musicians kept talking about we have to find a way to take control of us being in control of the door and 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 shows and getting more money on our, our stuff, Bandcamp Friday. So I think the outgrowth, and I don't want to interject too much into this, seems like things got a little bit better. Not where it needs to be, not the ultimate ideology, but at least a little better. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly not to, to gloss over the tremendous loss, things like that, and the challenges that so many folks uh, 
experienced in the pandemic. Yeah, but looking at it kind of from that from its impact on on music, absolutely. Let's get to the band. How you guys formed? How did you guys come up with Mr. Chair? Is there a Mrs. Chair? I I I I, I need it. <laughs> I'm just trying to get, I'm getting to an etymology. So talk to me a little bit about how you guys came together, how the name happened and why it works. Well, Ben started, it was uh, 2016 and uh, Ben, Mark Hetzler, trombone and uh, Mike Koshevsky on drums. They played a trio gig at a bar in town and uh, they just had known each other a long time and were looking to kind of make some new music and they played a trio gig. And I went to this show and watched it, and it was incredible. I had known about all these guys, but didn't really know any of them uh, personally. And uh, the it was wonderful. They kind of all agreed that they wanted someone to help fill out harmony a little bit. And I was at the gig, so I got the call. And uh, I, I think they knew who I was a little bit. And uh, then we just started rehearsing. At, uh, it's usually at Ben's house. It's, uh, so, uh, we, we've been, uh, yeah, we just started playing. We all brought music, original tunes, um, pretty quickly after, I would say like maybe a, less than a month, I brought this idea that we should play, uh, Pulcinella, uh, uh, which is Stravinsky's, one of Stravinsky's ballets. I just thought we can all play this type of music. I think it'd be really fun for us to kind of try to play something like this and arrange it and uh ben brought in um uh, an arrangement of the serenata from that ballet because mark mark wasn't totally keen on the idea just yet and uh ben finally brought in this arrangement built for mr chair of the serenata we played through it and it was like it kicked mark in the gear and he was like oh i'm sold and he went home and really worked on this arrangement and just like compiled all this 45 minute ballet from 20 movements down to 10 and it cut and pasted things and then expanded. Um, expanded and then we started adding in our own flavor. And so that's been a project that's really been, we've been working on since year one, but we just, yeah, uh, we just got to playing and started writing tunes for the band. And um, that was September, t- 2016. And then uh, around that time uh, we were trying to come up with, uh, a name for the band for like a year yeah it was it was it was a good six months at <laughs> yeah, least yeah it was into the next year although one of the earliest gigs we had we did label it this because i threw the name out there and we put it on a poster but then we didn't really like stick with it we were we were constantly like is this really a smart idea to name it mr chair and uh the name came from uh um it was uh an elizabeth warren quote Elizabeth Warren was in the uh, Senate Budget and Finance Committee, and they had brought in the Wells Fargo CEO. After the Wells Fargo, uh, after it was discovered that Wells Fargo was opening up accounts under people's names without them knowing, yeah, it became it was a huge deal. And it was a really miserable, terrible thing for uh, Wells Fargo to do. They brought in the CEO, and Elizabeth Warren is grilling him just on fire just like you know saying you should be in jail a cashier steal steals a handful of 20s and you're stealing millions of dollars from people and you were going to give you a fine you know and she keeps referring to the chairman of the committee usually people say (laughs) mr chairman but she keeps calling him mr chair and she said it like five oh. times in this one thing. And it just, as I was listening to this, this clip, it kept popping out to me. And uh, there have been some other great moments when people refer to this chairman as Mr. Chair. It's actually a little bit more common than I thought it was at the time. But really, there, was, there were not a lot of clips I could find. So That's but awesome. There, there was that one. We, we took that clip. We used it uh, to introduce the band sometimes. We like arranged it and put some synthesizers to it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where Mr. Chair stems from. So it's a, it's about, you know, doing the right thing. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of quirky and yeah. And it's actually, Mrs. Chair is kind of built into the name too. 
Well, and it could be Elizabeth Warren. She could be Mrs. Chair. Exactly. That's you know, I, I hear stories every once in a while where parents don't know what name to give their kid, Like, I, which is weird to me. Like, they've gone their whole life. They finally procreated. The zygotes developed. And they're like, we don't know what we're going to name this embryo. So yeah. I'm thinking maybe this should be something. If you just don't know and it's male, that kid's name is Mr. Chair. And that's it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> which would be so cool. That's it. <laughs> so that's it. I, I don't I don't know a lot about Madison. I'm always very interested when I interview musicians from areas that I'm just not familiar with. And in kind of the same thing. Some people are like, what's up in Kansas City? So what's going on in your world? How's the scene? How do you fit into it? What's it feel like? Madison rocks, man. Madison has a, an incredible and vibrant music scene. Really great original music. There's lot. There's people trying stuff. There's wonderful musicians that of all types. I mean, there's like great kind of pop soul writing. There's great like punk, angsty punk and uh, and and metal. There's great jazz and um, black music. Salsa scene is huge. Big salsa scene. Mm -hmm. Um, great classical music. I mean, a really world class string quartet that's in residence at the university, and um, and many other people at the that come through the university. So it's it's great, and I think that we kind of just have our own little uh, protrusion uh, within the scene. I mean, I don't. I I really am proud that I don't think we sound like anybody else uh, here and around, and um, uh. So we we're always kind of trying things and trying to invite our friends from this music scene into it to come play with us. Um, but uh, um, yeah, and the, uh, the really great venues too. There's awesome. Um, there's a couple awesome jazz clubs, the North Street Cabaret and Cafe Coda, two wonderful jazz clubs that put on really great music from around the country and around the world. Um, regularly pretty much every night uh then there's another art gallery called art lit lab that puts on awesome music they have a beautiful piano in a space with modern art and um and those are kind of the smaller venues not to count some of the bigger places that get national acts victor wooten was here a couple weeks ago creative spaces too uh there's a like a basically an independent uh, art space called Communication that does a lot of experimental stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a good friend just there, uh, who owns a restaurant, but who really opens up that space. It's called Rabinia uh, to to for artists to kind of be able to work through and develop things without it necessarily having to sell out a three hundred seat place, you know, on a on a tour like that. So. There's a lot of support for that, that independent, creative work here. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that, that, you know, in my position of getting CDs in the mail all the time is the first impression is the album that comes through. And I remember I was, I saw this big dog head with this kind of flowery background. <laughs> there's a bird swooping in, there's clouds. I mean, it looks a little psychedelic. It looks a little adventurous. Would you say that a part of what you guys are portraying with this really kind of epitomizes who you guys are and how you work together? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm incredibly proud of that, that um, album cover. I, I'm a very part-time graphic designer. Uh, uh, I love to do art, but um, we, the, it came from a, in January, 2020, Mark Hetzler uh, lost his dog, Jack. He died. Um, he was a tripod, uh, got cancer when he was a kid and lived 14 years. Um, wow. And uh, it, it was a really wonderful dog. And he lost him in yeah January 2020. And he was, of course, heartbroken. It was very sad. And uh, he tried. He, he said he set out to write the happiest tune he could. And um, that, and so he wrote "Better Days" for his dog. And of course, through the pandemic, this name becomes much more when you read it on face value. We're all looking for better days coming out of the pandemic, and just in general. 
but the tune was written for Jack. And, uh, and then, so Ben had this idea that we, we needed to have a dog album cover. And, yeah. uh, so we, we, uh, we had some images in the mind of what it could be. And, um, eventually we just commissioned, uh, De Quadre, De Quadre, James White. He's our friend and collaborator and, um, the one who we're working on an album with. But he, uh, he's, a, he's an artist. He went to school here um, in a great program called the First Wave Scholar uh, Program at UW. And uh, he was there uh, for visual art. And so we just said, here's a picture of Jack. Like, I, I wanted to be happy. I, um, our last album cover was pretty dark and uh, spacey. And I really wanted this one to, to have um, the, a happiness feeling and he that's what he threw out there and it it was like he just nailed it i it's cool to have um you know it's it's a real painting so mark has this piece of jack now that's awesome i i don't know if i we could ever go back to not having uh um a physical painting as an album cover because uh that not only is it a, a really nice design, it's so fun to see Jack and his, the, the portrait is just dead on, but um, I've gotten a lot of comments on it's nice to see like a physical art album cover yeah. again. And it, it's, not, it's not that it's that rare, but it is really still special, I think. Absolutely. So if anyone out there wants to pick up the album, see you live, anything pertaining to the band, where can they go? Where's the best place? Yeah, uh, Instagram and our website uh, and Facebook. Those are um, that's the ways to keep up on us. Instagram and Facebook of both Mr. Chair Music, and actually that's the the website too, Mr. Chair Music dot com. Um, we you can listen to our music. Uh, the best place for us is probably usually Bandcamp, and you can buy uh, buy the uh, um, the downloads there. Uh, the CDs, uh, you kind of have to work to grab a CD. I mean, you can just reach out to us and send us 20 bucks on PayPal and we'll ship you one. But uh, there's, um, yeah, we don't really have a, the best shop set up, which is something that we need to do. Uh, but, uh, and, and we, we actually have uh, our previous album. We have a bunch of, the, the CDs that we did for Better Days are pretty limited. We have about, we have like a hundred left, and I don't know if we'll print any more. Um, we have more than that for our previous album, which was a double disc CD, and we have vinyl for that triple vinyl. The like heavyweight. It's a big piece of art. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can you can find all that through Bandcamp and through our, um, our website. Uh, yeah. That's- Gentlemen, thank you for opening up. Thank you for taking time out. Thanks to Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Amen. Right. <laughs> amen. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Madison, Wisconsin, Kansas City, Missouri, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to both Ben and Jason for their time, cool, and energy. If you want to hear more interviews, you can find Neon Jazz interviews on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Subscribe to us at YouTube. For everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.